To create a timer similar to the one shown before, we will first need to create some variables. These are scoreboard objectives that will be used to save and modify number values. Firstly, we're going to need a number variable that will hold the max number of seconds in our timer. In our example, we're going to use 600 because our timer will be for 10 minutes. To create the variable, we go to scoreboard objective and create a new we we'll call it timer score and make it of the class dummy because we do not want to modify it with anything other than command blocks. Our second variable is going to be a minutes variable. This will display the amount of minutes that are left on the clock. We can create another dummy objective named timer minutes. Thirdly, we want a variable that will display how many seconds are left inside each minute. We create a third dummy objective named timer seconds. Lastly, we need a visual UI element that will show these values on the player's screen. We can create a new boss bar to achieve this. Boss bars are identified by their numerical value. I use boss bar 1 for ease in this tutorial. I named the boss bar timer bar, however this will be changed in our command blocks later. To make the boss bar show up, simply run this command. Our final step of prep is to set the max value of the bar itself. For this tutorial, since we're using 10 minutes as our timer, we set the max amount to 600. To see the boss bar go up and down, we can simply run this command with any number between 0 and, in the example, 600. We will need two command block functions to run this timer. The first function is a reset function, which will reset all of our variables. And the second function is the clock, which will count the timer down as it's running. Let's start with the reset function, as it's slightly simpler. To run this command, I use a simple instant resetting activator, which triggers and resets every time I place a redstone block here. To achieve this, I simply use the set block command to place air where the redstone block was. Every time the activator is triggered, I want to run five separate commands. The first three commands will reset the variables that we created earlier. Because scoreboard objectives are required to be attached to a player, we need to create a fake player to attach all our values to. Let's name this entity hashtag timer entity and create three unconditional chain blocks to reset those values. We want to set both timer score and timer minutes to their max values and timer seconds to zero. The last two commands will update our boss bar UI element. We want to replace the timer bar text at the top of the screen with our actual time values. We'll need to create a JSON text that can read in our variables and display them as they change. We'll set the name by grabbing the timer entity's timer minute score, followed by a colon, followed by the timer entity's timer second score. If we run the command chain now, the text above the boss bar will update. However, the actual value of the bar itself does not change. To get the boss bar to match our timer score value, we can use the execute command. Execute store result will apply the result of the final command into the attached component, which is where we put the boss bar value. Then we can run an empty command with the timer entity's timer score variable so we get the timer score value without actually changing it. Running the command chain again should show the bar filling it up. Now, we need a function that ticks down as the clock is running. For our clock, I use the simple 442 repeater clock because it runs equal to a second barring lag. I also used a repeater choke as the activator so I don't have to constantly start and stop the clock itself. The first command is a duplicate of the last command we just wrote, except we do remove one from timer score. Every time this runs, the timer score will go up and down and the bar will update. We also want to reduce the time on the text above the bar. We can reduce one from the timer seconds value every time the clock is run. However, for the minutes, we only want them to be reduced when the seconds value hits zero. We can use the execute command again to trigger this only when we need to. Execute if will only run if the following statement is true. So if we execute if timer seconds is less than zero, we can then reduce the minutes by one creating another command with the same if check, and we can restart timer seconds at 59 to start the minute countdown again. This is all handled behind the scenes, so to actually update the text, we simply need to run the second to last command from the reset function again. 
Now, if we remove the choke from the clock, we should start seeing the timer tick down. Success! We can also have specific things trigger when the timer reaches a certain point. Using execute if and our timer score variable, we can trigger events at specific times. A good example of this is triggering the reset function and reapplying the timer choke when the timer hits zero. That should do it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. Um, I'd love to make more in the future, so if you could uh, like and subscribe, that'd help me out a lot. Uh, if you have any questions or want me to try and cover anything else, please leave a comment in the comment section. 